Hello, my HQT pies. We have an official announcement to make. The family has now grown bigger with a capital GB. As of this moment, the whole of Europe HQ is in the time zone just for you. Hello, UK and Ireland. Deutschland, are you with us? Sava la France. Ciao, Italia. I would love an aperitivo right now. Now, we are so pleased to have you with us along for the thrill ride that is HQ Trivia. Tell me in the chat, where in Europe are you playing from, players? What city, what country are you repping? The whole continent is right here making this a historic day. I'm Sharon Carpenter, your chaperone to show quizness, your diplomat of De Niro. And the rules are the same as always. You'll get 12 questions. They might be easy at first, but they will test you in the end. Answer them right and you move on. Get all 12 right and you're an EU MVP. Now today's prize is 750 USD. That's about 610 euros or 703 Swiss francs. Whatever the color, the cash, I'm sure it will look a lot better in your hands. Okay, you focused? Are you ready to play for a win? We're about to make history, baby. Here we go. Q1. What term is used for both a formal set of clothes and a set of playing cards? Suit, waistcoat, tuxedo, t-shirt. Cards and clothes. Is it suit, waistcoat, tuxedo, t-shirt? Dress to impress, but only one of these is on the cards today, keeping those diamond cufflinks close to your hearts. It's suits, of course. Suit for the win, 29,313 of you are suited and booted right now. The only cards in the pack not wearing suits are the jokers, an observation that also rings true at a wedding. Q2, which object is usually in a conductor's hand during a performance? Sleeping ferret, batten, box of tissues. In the conductor's hand, a sleeping ferret, batten, or a box of tissues. You'll need more than one box of tissues if you flunk this one. Counting you in, it's a batten, of course. That one wasn't too tricky, 26,000. 541 of you are still counted into this game. Like herding cats with a laser pen, conductors use the baton to give directions to the different sections of the orchestra. Always very impressed to, to watch them at work. Q3, chestnut and button are types of which ingredients? Grape, carrot, mushroom. Chestnut and button, types of which ingredients? They say carrots help you see in the dark, but you'd have to be blind to pick them here. The fungus we are happy to eat. It's mushroom, of course. Mushroom, your winning answer, 22,022 if you have the right ingredients. Chestnut and button mushrooms are available in supermarkets, so maybe give those weird ones you found in the shed a miss. That's my advice. Q4, what part of the body is damaged if you break your tibia, leg, arm, scalp? If you break your tibia, ouch. What part of your body have you damaged? Breaking any bone is extremely painful, but you're really not walking away from this one. It's in your leg. Leg is the answer. 16,296 of you are legging it on to Q5, uh, AKA the shin bones. Some tibias seem to be extremely sensitive. You only need to breathe near a footballer's shin and he may never walk again. What's up with that? I just want to say RIP to the RIP jokes. May they RIP in peace. And also shout out to all of you in Crouch End. So many of you since yesterday. Good to see you back again. Q5, which character does Jude Law play in the movie King Arthur, Legend of the Sword? Vortigern, Uther Pendragon, King Arthur. Jude Law, what character does he play here? If you stuck with it to the credits, here's your conversation, not in the originals, but he's Arthur's corrupt uncle in this one. He plays Vortigern. Jude Law plays Vortigern. Oh my goodness, that was a savage one right there. Pure brutality. 4,915 of you, however, are laying down the law like Jude Law. 
The film lost 18 million at the box office. Director Guy Ritchie reached for Excalibur, but he got the sword in the stone instead. HQTs, what is your favorite Jude Law movie? Tell me in the chat right now. Is it Alfie, perhaps? Mr. Ripley, Closer, Grand Budapest? That's a good one, right? Favorite Jude Law movie? He's been in so many and simultaneously many times as well. Q6, which monarch laid the foundation stone at Balmoral Castle? Edward VII, Victoria, William IV. Which monarch laid down that stone? at Balmoral Castle. This monarch didn't kneel to anybody, but she did kneel to lay this vital stone. Queen of the sponge, it's Queen Victoria. Vicky for the win. 1,298 of you are ruling this game. Now, Prince Philip also knelt at this castle when he proposed to the current queen while they were hunting grouse. Sounds very romantic, doesn't it? Q7. As of 2017, which of these industries have the highest percentage of the UK's GDP? Service, travel, construction. The highest percentage of the UK's GDP. Which industry is the right industry? While well, two of them actually produce things, it's the other one that's raking in the big bucks, glad to be of, well, themselves. Service is your answer. 819 of you serviced that Q7 really well. The service sector is responsible for 79% of the GDP, while self-service machines are responsible for all of our rage. Those things are so frustrating. Q8, who's ready? In an episode of Friends, what name was Ross supposed to say at his wedding ceremony instead of Rachel, Julie, Elizabeth, Emily? That was a big fail there from Ross, but what was the name he was supposed to say? His brain froze, but unfortunately for Ross, his lips kept on moving. The name of his bride to not be, it was Emily. Remember? Remember that explosive episode 705 of you remember? You're still standing at the altar. Now the wedding may have forced or may have turned sour for Ross, but turned up pretty sweet for Monica and Chandler. The two tied the knot themselves in season seven. Yeah, they did. Lived happily ever after. Q9, which of these typefaces is named after the Latin name for a European country? Frutiga, Calibra, Helvetica. Named after the Latin name for a European country. They all sound suitably Latin, but which font best captures the Swiss? Sans serif, but pro design. It's Helvetica. Hell, Vetica, your winning answer, 470 of you found the right font here. The Swiss army knife of typefaces, Helvetica can be used for anything and still look good. Truly the comic sans for people with souls. Comic sans sucks, by the way. Q10, which of these animals is not a marsupial? Bandicoot, groundhog, a possum. Which one is not a marsupial? How well do you know your furry creatures? Unlike marsupials, there's no baby pouch for this beastie. Try as he might, Bill Murray can't escape these guys. Groundhog is the answer we were looking for. 293 of you hogging the winds here. Now, Groundhog Day is a real American holiday based on the idea that a large rodent controls when spring will arrive. USA, USA. Q11, our penultimate round. Things are getting tight, as well as medals. What were winners given at the Rio Olympics medal ceremonies? Laurel wreaths, miniature statuettes, carnival masks. What were those winners given, as well as the medals? Do you remember? As if winning a medal wasn't mind-blowing enough, athletes had to try to work out what the hell these weird things were designed to hold the medals themselves. It was totally bizarre. Miniature statuettes. 74 players left in the game. Step up to the podium, guys. We are moving on to the final round. Here we go, ladies and gents. It's Q12, the moment of truth. 74 players left 
in our first European game. $750 up for grabs. Who's going to take it home? Which of these authors was over 50 when his first novel was published? Richard Adams, J.R. Tolkien, Robert Ludlum. Tap well, players. Which of these authors was over 50? It's never too late to accomplish your dreams, and this author is the perfect example. His first novel began as a story for his daughters on a car trip while four publishers turned him down. It only took one yes at age 52. Watership Down was released. Richard Adams was the author. Richard Adams for the win. We have 13 historic winners in this game. Huge congratulations to our 13 winners making history today. Well done, each of you is taking home $57.69. We've got James Beans, who's falling asleep right here. I'm sure that woke you up. Kathy Kakat, she looks pretty awake. I think that's her little kitty next to her. I'm sure that put a smile on your face. Roberti Beck. Uh, we've got Sam Mack. What are you guys going to do with that cash? You could download the movie Watership Down. Make sure you've got that box of tissues I was talking about. Buy a bunch of tasty fungus to feast on. So much you could do with that cash. Congratulations again, winners. You have stood tall among all your neighbors. What an exciting game to put in the books. HQ is live for you every day at 9 p.m. GMT and weekdays at 3 p.m. GMT. Since you've stayed this long, do you want a hint for the next game? You ready? Here it is, 180. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm giving you. 180 is your hint for the 9 p.m. game. So it's goodbye from me for now. I'm Sharon Carpenter. I will be right here in your phone awaiting your return. Until then, tag me on Insta or hit me on Twitter from wherever you're playing in Europe. This was a great one. I will see you guys at 9 p.m. Bye.